Hey guys, welcome back to my channel on Everyday Iron Mom. If you're new here, welcome. I just did Iron Man Arizona. It was my second one. I just wanted to give you a race recap. Um, overall, it was a really great race. Um, I was super nervous with it being my second one because I knew what to expect and I knew I wanted to do better because, you know, first one is always, um, you know, just get through it finish and then second one is you know you have more of a goal to PR and I did so there was a little bit more pressure there but also excitement like I was super excited I just love racing uh, especially this distance um it's a challenge and um I did good I, I did okay it, uh, I was nervous also with the first my Lake Placid because I felt like the stars aligned and I you know I felt great like no issues at all well I guess the stars aligned again because I felt really great this race too. Um, the only thing that made it a little bit harder was just probably the fact that I was pushing myself a little bit more um, to hit my goal. But other than that, um, I didn't have any stomach issues. My nutrition was great. Um, no cramps. I had actually going into the race um, having some like pain back in my right side for the last couple months. I didn't have any of that in my run. Um, and then I had like a week before some sort of like little foot pain that were just like, okay, I've just, my coach just had me rest it that all week, that whole week, um, just to be on the safe side. And, um, and it's great. I, I was great on race day. So didn't feel any of that. The swim was cold. <laughs> um, it's in a lake. Uh, it, it was, 60 I think barely 60 degrees barely 61 degrees I think maybe almost wetsuit mandatory honestly and there was even a guy who had lost all his stuff and didn't have a wetsuit and I don't know if he just couldn't find one last minute which I wouldn't be able to either probably but he swam the whole thing without a wetsuit which I wonder how he did because I know I do know that after the swim there were about 80 90 um athletes in the tent that did not get to finish the swim because it was so cold. There was a lot of, um, a lot of people that just didn't make it because of that. Um, and so I wonder, I hope he made it okay because <laughs> it was cold. Um, I'm glad I did the practice swim though, because I knew what to expect on race day. Um, I knew that if I push through the first five to 10 minutes, my face will stop stinging <laughs> and it will get better. And it did. And I was grateful. Um, there were a lot of people in neoprene booties and caps and things like that were legal because it was so cold. Um, however, I didn't want to mess with that because it slowed me down. So I just went with it and you know what? I was fine. I didn't have any issues being cold. Um, I just stayed focused. Um, overall, it was a pretty good swim. It was actually, it was a, it was one of the tougher swims I've ever done. Um, but that just because there were a lot of jet skis and there were pontoons on the water and I didn't pay any attention. There's always kayaks watching out for you, but I don't know. I'm assuming they were part of the race, but there at the end was the worst because it got super choppy with the waves. Um, and then they crash up against the cement wall and then crash back. And like, and then of course it always gets really congested at the end too with swimmers coming in and then they kind of had, you veer off in a different direction and the buoys weren't clear and just had like um kayakers yelling at you go this way turn no you know it's just a little confusing then that really slowed me down a lot um but overall i stayed pretty focused i didn't even feel like i needed that good 20 minutes of warm-up time um i probably i don't know i probably stay at a steady pace um usually i start off pretty slow just because I have to like adjust to the water and, and realize that I'm okay and not panic. I'm not gonna drown, I'm fine. I didn't need that this time, it was, it was really good. Um, and it was just a, a one loop um, start, dog hairs on me. A one loop start and then around. The, the lake is shaped like a river. It looks like a river, but it's like, and then just you know down, down the lake and around. Um, so I like that because I don't like getting out of the water for a second loop. I just don't even like the feel of getting out. I've gotten out and ran on sand before and it's just, your legs feel like sludge <laughs> and it gets your heart rate up and I just don't like it. I'd rather just keep swimming. 
Um, so um, I only took on water a couple times, not as bad as um, the time at Lake Placid where they had to <laughs> watch me closely, but I did, um, I just have a habit of when I take on water and start to panic a little bit, just look for the kayaks, they're everywhere. And that is what gets me through not panicking because as soon as I take on water, you know, I, I gasp a little bit and I'll look for a kayaker and I'll be like, okay, they're there. If, if I need them, they're there. But I never need them. It's just the idea that they're there. Made it through the swim, slower than Placid swim, <clears throat> which Placid is a really easier swim because you have it's clear water, it's cable, it's it's like crystal clear glass lake, like it's it's beautiful. Um, this one was not quite that. So my swim was um, 129, I believe, and plus it was like 125, so a little bit slower, but um, felt good coming out of the water. Um, got down there and let the wetsuit, they used to be called strippers, I think they're called peelers now. So I, I, I sat down and let, let them peel my wetsuit off, and then from there I just grabbed my wetsuit and just ran into transition. I felt good running felt really good. I saw my husband as I was running the transition. Um, I wanted to make my times quicker this time. Um, last, the first time, um, first Ironman, I was just taking my time and, and, and paying attention to what I was doing and taking it all in. But this time I actually wanted, um, to take some time off. So, but the time eaters in the first transition was, it was cold. So, um, you had to get dried off really well and I had worn um, arm sleeves and so try and get those put on when you're still kind of wet and damp took some time and um, just all the sunscreen I um, needed and so uh, I don't remember what my t transition time was maybe 10 minutes which I think is faster I, th I believe um, Placid was maybe closer to 15 <laughs> I was taking my own sweet time I took ibuprofen in T1 because I um I didn't want any chance of getting any back pain and not feeling well and not being able to be as fast. So I did that. So I came out of T1 and got on the bike. Um, felt great, fresh. I knew that the bike course was three loops, which I was kind of looking forward to because I knew after that first loop, I knew what to expect and I could kind of like gauge on my watch, you know, time-wise where I needed to be. Um, so, um, Arizona on the way out on the first, well, all the loops, but it's an incline out, a little bit of an incline out and you have the wind against you. So it's pretty slow going. Um, I only averaged like 15 miles per hour on the way out. Um, but I knew I'd get a turnaround. So that is what kept me going. Every loop is knowing, okay, yeah, this is going to be hard. The first half of this loop but I'm gonna fly the second half. And I did, I turned around and man, it was like, yes, <laughs> this is where it's at. But you know, you gotta be careful too. There was a very bad accident there right after that turnaround. Cause I think people probably got a little too excited, um, went a little too fast. And I think um, actually somebody in lane going um, in, against the wind, the wind blew them over into the other lane where somebody was coming down, they say like 30 miles per hour, um, and ran into that guy, and the guy was in bad shape, had surgery, and I think ended up being um, at the hospital there in Arizona for like a week. Um, so, and I saw actually an accident later on in front of my very own eyes of just one guy, but he went up over the curb and like tumbled and looked bad. And I just remember I was, I said, I'll like, oh, <laughs> no, I didn't stop because I know there's people right there, but you want to because it just, it just looked really bad. But um, anyway, turn around and you're like super excited because the wind's at your back and you're not working as hard. Um, but I still am not comfortable enough to go so fast. I, I went I probably 20, I think. My husband said I averaged like 24 miles an hour on the way back. Um, it's like I could power wise go faster, but safety wise, I'm just not comfortable yet going that fast. That's that's pretty fast and in the wind and I just, I'm too chicken. <laughs> so um, that was the way it was for three loops. And um, I felt really good the whole time. My coach gave me a wattage to kind of aim for the entire time and I hit it. Um, that's what I, I, I just, that kept me going. I just watched my wattage and, um, yeah, I, I didn't really stop on the bike only once to use the restroom, the porta potties. 
really quick, um, which was kind of towards the end of the bike ride. And so my legs were like mush getting off and I wobbled a little bit. It's so nice. Iron Man has got it so nice to wear. You know, the volunteers are amazing. Um, if you ever volunteered, thank you. You're amazing. They, they like held my bike for me when I went into the um, porta potty. I come out, um, readjust, you know, my bottles, do all the things I need to do that's easier when I'm stopped. And then I was back on the road. One thing I didn't like on the bike this time is that they didn't have any water refill stations like they did at Placid. Um, so I just, um, in my special needs bags, halfway through the bike race, I had just put in my um, formula um, powder in the bottom. I was hoping they would have water to refill it like because they didn't pass in, but they didn't. So I had to make a stop not only at my special needs bag to get everything I needed out of that and, and switch bottles and stuff. Then I had to make another stop at an aid station to like get water bottles from the from them and like refill all my bottles. And so that was, you know, a, a little annoying to me, but in hindsight, it wasn't that much more time. <laughs> but uh, it's like, you know, every little thing counts. But um, so really it was a pretty uneventful bike ride. Um, it was pretty going out because the mountains are in the background. I'm sitting here petting my dog. <laughs> um, mountains in the background and on the way back, you've got to look forward to seeing um, your people. I had my husband there. So every time I came back into town, um, I got to see him. He was always there cheering for me. And it was so nice. It was really nice. I like the loops. Um, and then got into T2. Um, got off the bike and was super wobbly. <laughs> Looking back at my video, um, I like swerved a little bit. Like, um, I mean, I, my bike was um, 622, I believe. Um, but I, I was so wobbly that when I finally like, you could see that volunteers like, and then clap when I actually started running straight. <laughs> it was funny. But anyway, I got into T2 and that was a much quicker time because I just had to like take off my helmet and my gloves and all that. I left my warmers on um, for the run. Um, wasn't sure how warm it get, but I was comfortable enough that I didn't want to take the time to, to take them off on the bike because I knew I'd want them back on on the run because the sun goes down and gets cold. Love those on the entire race. Um, so took some more ibuprofen again in T2 um, to prevent back pain during my run. And then I was on my way out T2. Um, the hardest thing at first coming out of T2 is pacing myself. I always, always feel good actually getting off the bike initially. Um, I feel like I want to go fast just because I'm so excited to get off the bike. Running is my favorite. Um, and you know, six hours after six hours of being on the bike, you're just ready to get off. So, um, I have to like hold back, um, but I still, I guess, didn't hold back enough because my husband wasn't ready for me with his camera. <laughs> he said I was too fast for him in the first couple of miles. But um, I naturally slowed myself down. Um, it's definitely nothing like a standalone marathon where your legs aren't tired from the beginning of the marathon. Um, so all in all, I averaged a 10.30 pace, um, which is better than my... Um, a lot better than my Lake Placid average pace. I think it was like 11.15. So um, I definitely was pushing more on the run. It, it was flatter, so that helped. Um, Lake Placid had a lot more hills. Um, aid stations, I didn't, I, I was just gonna leave it, see how it goes. Um, I wanted to run through them, but I'm not coordinated enough to really like drink water and run at the same time and I, I don't I still don't like carrying maybe in the future I'll just carry water but um this time in Placid I took my nutrition and um my water at the same time through every aid station just walked and took my time this time I made sure to have my nutrition in right before an aid station coming up and then all I did was I would walk get the water run to the next the end where they had more water and drink that one so I drink two cups of water every time and then I just had um gels cliff blocks that's what i did um i would do um, a whole package every hour and that always works well for me water and um cliff blocks work really well for me um oh back on the bike my nutrition i have to backtrack because that's important um my strategy was i used Vita vitargo um which 
I only do one scoop because it's a little sweet for me otherwise, um, but you're supposed to do two scoops. But instead of, since I didn't do as many carbs in that drink and to keep my belly happy because it's always growling at me, I did um, peanut butter pretzel bites um, every hour. And also I would do cliff blocks in addition to that. Um, so, but then by mile 80, again, I would stop the solid foods and only eat cliff blocks so that I could prepare myself to, for the run. And my gut would have that all like digested better so that I don't get sick on the run. Because when you're running, your um, belly is sloshing up and down and um, you're more likely to get sick and belly upset that way. So um, that's what I did, the Vitargo formula. I did again, and feel like I needed a bottle of water, uh, which I knew from Placid. So I actually only, I, ha I have room for four, ca um, I have four cages on my bike for four bottles, but I only carried three to start because I knew somewhere along the way I'd want um, water and I didn't want to throw away one of my water bottles to take one of theirs. So I left a space open and that worked just fine. Um, it wasn't hot either. So it, it was perfect, like 60s all day. It was really great. The swim was cold, but, um, so back to the run, um, super spectator friendly, Arizona's super spectator friendly. Not only the bike do you get to see him every loop, but then on the run, you get to see him a lot. <laughs> My poor husband didn't get any breaks. He just was walking around the whole time. Um, but he was very motivating. He was my Sherpa for the weekend. Um, <clears throat> he knew a goal, my goal that I had. And so when it got to probably closer to halfway through the marathon, I was like curious what my projected time was. So I asked him and from then on, every time I saw him, he was doing the math at like what my current pace was and what pace I needed to keep up to meet my goal and just like where I was at. And I really appreciate that. It was like super motivating to me and just like, I don't know, it was, it was great. And, and there are even times when he's like, you can slow down if you're not feeling it. You're, you can slow down if you need to. Like, you're doing good at this pace. Like, you can still meet your goal. But I kept going as fast as I could at that pace. Um, and, yeah, I definitely slowed. I think it probably started at, like, I don't know, 9, 30, 10 minute miles, first part of the marathon. And then by the second half, it was more like 10, 30, 11, like, you know, getting... 11:30, and so you don't want to and you you still feel like you're putting out as much energy as you were at the beginning of the marathon but you just naturally like it's just such a long day your legs just rebel <laughs> against you and I I did feel like I was definitely pushing through a lot of like discomfort as far as like tiredness very tired um legs even though, you know, it's not an amazing pace, uh, like it's for after a bike, it's, it's okay. But like, I would like to certainly have a lot better run pace. Um, but overall, oh man, it was Mike Riley's very last North American, um, Ironman announcing last time announcing. So that was very special. I made sure to take in his voice and he actually ended up saying my name twice, which was really cool. Um, so I just kind of, after I crossed the finish line, I just kind of let the emotions get to me as I guess they did in like Placid too, but this one even more because I just, I don't know, I just, there's something about pushing yourself and meeting your goals that like, you can't beat it. It was, um, it was a really good feeling. So I'm doing another one. Um, I'm signed up for, um. Ironman Texas, end of April. So I'll begin training as a little bit of off season for me in February, and then I will be training for that. Morning routine. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because some people are curious. Um, I'm not too rigorous. Um, the only thing that I'm really strict about is that I have to get up at least an hour before um, we need to head out the door because I have to have my coffee. I have to sit and drink my coffee. Um, before the race and I'm that way at home anyway so I just need to like calm my nerves especially before a race and I don't know just make sure I have plenty of time and I don't want to feel rushed I don't need extra stress so I drink my coffee I get up an extra 
hour early. Um, I think we were, I don't know, transition closed at 6.30. So I think we were, we left our hotel at like 5.30 maybe. I was up at 4.30, 4.15, something like that. Um, and I am really <laughs> strict about my rest, um, especially since we didn't have kids with us or anything. Like I just went to bed super early and got <clears throat> plenty of sleep and a good night's rest. So <clears throat> that was really good. Um, <clears throat> don't want to skimp on that. Um, so got up, had my coffee, and then my pre-race um, breakfast always is just peanut butter and jelly sandwich and sometimes a banana with that too. And then it's like a couple hours before I actually get in the water. So like right before I got in the water, I took um, some cliff blocks and then I always take my inhaler um, a couple puffs before I got in and I carried my inhaler and my bike and my run again. Um, but if I do have any asthma issues, it's usually in the water. So I always make sure to have that and I didn't have any issues, so that was good. If you want to follow me along my journey, follow me every day Iron Mom on my vlog. So thanks so much, guys.